Welcome to the second episode on Legal Cost Explained. Uh, today we'll be looking at party and party costs, or the party and party scale. Uh, as already mentioned, costs can be awarded on three different scales, with the first and the most common being that between party and party. In other words, the party and party scale, or party and party costs. The reason why the scale is the most common is because a court will only award attorney and client or attorney and own client costs under certain circumstances. Attorney and client costs are generally only awarded where an agreement expressly provides that costs will be payable on the attorney and client scale should a dispute arise in terms thereof. In other words, say A and B conclude a contract in which there is a clause providing for the recovery of legal costs on the attorney and client scale in the event of either party having to enforce the contract due to the other party's breach. B then proceeds to breach the contract and A sustains damages. A then issues summons against B for the payment of damages and a while thereafter judgment is granted in A's favour. If prayed for, A will be granted costs on the attorney and client scale as this was agreed to in the contract. A court may award costs on the attorney and own client scale where the parties agreed in writing to such scale being applicable. Most often, however, this scale of costs is granted by a court where the court strongly disapproves of the conduct of the unsuccessful party. In other words, attorney and own client cost awards are often punitive in nature. An award for costs, regardless of the scale, will be illustrated in a court order or judgment. An order, including an award for costs on the party and party scale, will look similar to the following. Having considered the papers filed of record and having heard counsel for the parties, the following order is made. Payments in the sum of 488,129 rand.98. Interest on the aforesaid amount at the commercial overdraft rate charged by the plaintiff's bankers from time to time plus 4% per annum, calculated from the date on which the payment falls due and compounded monthly until the date on which final payments is made. And the defendants are to pay the costs of the suit jointly and severally on a party and party scale. Where the scale of costs is not expressly stated in the order, the party and party scale will apply. For example, a party may be ordered to pay costs of suit or costs of the application. All cost awards will be on the party and party scale unless specifically stated otherwise. In addition to being the most common scale, party and party is also the scale on which the least amount of costs will be recoverable by the client. This is because party and party costs are strictly subject to court tariffs, which are set out in the relevant rules and charged according to fixed scales. The costs that are recoverable on the scale are those that have been reasonably incurred and that are necessary or proper for the attainment of justice or for defending the rights of any party. What this means is that, for example, although the client will be charged X rand by his attorney for drafting a summons, the tariffs prescribe that only Y rand may be recovered from the opposition in this regard. The difference between the two amounts will therefore be for the client's account, which he would have already paid to the attorney. A more detailed example is the following. The attorney charges the client 1,500 rand per hour for drafting a summons. The summons takes two hours to draft, so the attorney charges 3,000 rand. In terms of the tariffs, however, drafting a summons is set at 200 rand per quarter of an hour, hypothetically. So if we multiply that by 8 to give us two hours, we get 1,600 rand. This means that although the client paid his attorney 3,000 rand, he will only be able to recover 1,600 rand from the opposition should costs on the party and party scale be awarded in his favour. On the party and party scale, clients can expect to recover roughly 30 to 40% of their total legal costs incurred. Take note that the costs recoverable will also differ depending on whether the relevant order was obtained in the magistrate's court or the high court. This is because these courts are regulated by separate rules in which different tariffs are prescribed. The main difference between the two courts is that the magistrate's court's rules prescribe lower tariffs, meaning less is recoverable. In the magistrate's court, the actual cost recoverable Will also depend on the amount claimed in the summons. Let me elaborate on this by adding to the above scenario. Again, please note that the values referred to in the scenario are not accurate but rather hypothetical. We know that the attorney charges 3,000 Rand for spending two hours drafting the summons. Let's say the summons was not issued in the High Court but rather the Magistrate's Court due to the fact that only 40,000 Rand is being claimed. Had the matter proceeded in the High Court, 200 Rand per quarter of an hour would be recoverable, or 1,600 Rand in total. In the Magistrate's Court, however, the rules provide that, if the claim is less than 7,000 Rand, 300 Rand may be recovered in total for drafting the summons. 
If the claim is more than 7,000 Rand, but less than 50,000 Rand, 400 Rand may be recovered, and so on. As our claim is for 40,000 Rand, only 400 Rand of the 3,000 Rand incurred will be recoverable insofar as drafting the summons is concerned. Remember, the above amounts are random. I just wanted to illustrate that cost recovery in the magistrate's court is subjected to monetary scales, four to be exact, A, B, C, and D. I hope that I have not just confused you, but all you need to know is that, in the magistrate's court, the client will recover less of their legal costs than they would in the high court. This is provided the attorney charges the same rates regardless of the court. It is not only the tariffs, however, which make the scale undesirable. As in addition thereto, the rules provide that only such costs specific to the case may be recovered. Although the taxi master has a discretion in determining which costs are specific to the case, correspondences and attendances between the client and their attorney are usually not recoverable under the scale. For example, a letter addressed by the attorney to the client in which the attorney reports on the progress of the matter. Such a letter is not necessary to the suit and does not take the matter any closer to finality. The fee for such correspondence is therefore not recoverable from the opposition in the event of success. The successful party will however be able to recover at tariff fees incurred by the attorney for correspondences and attendances with the other party's attorney, provided such correspondences and attendances pertain to the matter. Another bummer about the scale is that fees incurred prior to the issuing of a summons or notice of motion may not be recovered. For example, let's say that in our scenario, before the attorney drafts and issues the summons, he has an hour-long consult with the client, costing the client 1,200 Rand, being the attorney's rate. As the consult took place before the summons was issued, no fees in this regard may be recovered at all. There are, of course, still many costs which may be recovered, such as inter alia, drafting a summons and other pleadings. The attorney's fee for travelling time will also be allowed, provided it is incurred necessarily to further the client's case. For example, to conduct an inspection in loco, to attend a medical examination, etc. A travelling fee that would not be recoverable is that incurred for purposes of consulting with the client or a witness at a place other than the attorney's offices. Consults are to take place at the attorney's offices, alternatively where counsel is employed, at their chambers. Understandably, costs incurred due to overcaution, errors, unnecessary steps and duplication will not be recoverable. Where, in the opinion of the taxing master, more than one attorney has necessarily been engaged in the performance of any of the services covered by the tariff, each such attorney shall be entitled to be remunerated on the basis set out in the tariff for the work necessarily done by him. At least the client will be able to recover the full amount spent on advocates, considering their fees are a disbursement, right? Wrong. Rule 69 of the Uniform Rules of Court states that, save where the court authorizes fees consequent upon the employment of more than one advocate to be included in a party and party bill of costs, only such fees as are consequent upon the employment of one advocate shall be allowed as between party and party. Where fees in respect of more than one advocate are allowed in a party and party bill of costs, the fees to be permitted in respect of any additional advocate shall not exceed one half of those allowed in respect of the first advocate. Save where the defendant or respondent is awarded costs, the tariff of maximum fees for advocates between party and party referred to in Part 4 of Table A of Annexure 2 to the Rules of the Magistrates Court, here and after referred to as a tariff, shall apply where the amount or value of the claim falls within the jurisdiction of the Magistrates Court, unless the Court, on request made before or immediately after giving of judgment, otherwise directs. The taxation of advocates' fees as between party and party shall be effected by the taxing master in accordance with this rule and, where applicable, the tariff. Where the tariff does not apply, he shall allow such fees, not necessarily in excess thereof, as he considers reasonable. Magistrates Court Rule 33, subsection 5a and 6 states that, in district court and regional court civil matters, the scale of fees to be taken by advocates referred to in section 34, subsection 2a2 of the Legal Practice Act 2014, as between party and party, shall be that set out in Table A and Table B of Annexure 2, subject to any restrictions in any part of the tables. Save as to appearance in open court without an advocate referred to in Section 34, Subsection 2A1 of the Legal Practice Act, the fees in Subrule 5 shall be allowed whether the work has been done by an attorney or by his or her candidate attorney, but shall, except in the case of the fee referred to in Paragraph 13 of the General Provisions under Table A of Annexure 2, be allowed only insofar as the work to which such fees have been allocated has in fact necessarily been done. 
In Bromley v. Leonard, it was held that copies of all correspondence and documents which are placed before the advocates and which are relevant to the history of the case are properly chargeable in a party and party bill of costs. In light of the above, it is clear that advocates' fees are also subject to the rules and relevant tariffs. So, this is party and party costs in a nutshell. It is clearly an undesirable scale of costs, so my advice to anyone contracting with another party, make sure you have it in writing that in the event of a dispute, legal costs will be recoverable by the successful party on the attorney and client or attorney and own client scale. Next, I will be discussing attorney and client costs and thereafter attorney and own client. I will also be giving a rundown on the actual procedure of recovering costs from the losing party, so stay tuned.